time for another math video. This time we'll talk about grading. Our online gradebook looks very strange. We go over to Achievements with the old-fashioned seal of LCC back when it was a trade school. This is the important paragraph here. Achievements are more than grades. Grades only sort students. Achievements show everything that the math department and the instructor value and celebrate. Most math classes give students points. Students start with zero points, and they earn points for attendance, or homework, or quizzes, or midterms, or tests, or whatever. And then, at the end of the term, all those points are somehow smushed together, as if that means anything. This is kind of silly. Partly because apples and oranges don't go together, and partly because why grade you on a midterm? No one in the world cares what you know during week five of a math class. There's a better way to do things, which is achievement-based grading. This page looks huge. There's achievements for getting a certain letter grade. There's how real math works achievements that are green. There's being a mather achievement that are blue. And then there's yellow homework achievements. The first set specific to Math 20. The second set specific to Math 25. One achievement is free, that's why it's checked off. You will check off lots of achievements. Let's look at a sample student. So you will have a code name here. Let me scroll down a little. You'll have a code name. I will send out an email with a bunch of suggested code names. Just if you are completely uncreative, you can steal one of mine, but make up your own. It is more fun. So Luke has 43 of these achievements. Let's see what that looks like. He has none in the A range, but he is a B student. He has all the Silver League checked off. He doesn't have this one, but that's okay. He doesn't need to finish all the ones for earning a C because he's earned a B. This is done very carefully. To earn a B, you have to do decently on the final, 60%. To pass the class, all you have to do is pass weekly quizzes. If your quiz score is terrible, maybe you miss those classes, maybe you were sick, Maybe you just don't do well on weekly quizzes and crammed like crazy at the end of the term, whatever. Then you can worry about the final. But if testing isn't your thing, then maybe the slightly less stressful weekly quizzes are how you will pass the class and you don't have to worry about the final. Everything you do to earn a D keeps going to see. So if you have five stars in the being a mather subsections below, then you're almost at one star in each of those subsections, and then you're almost at two stars in each of them, and then you're almost at three stars in each of them. So when you earn a D, you'll say, hey, I'm almost at a C. And then you'll get your C and say, hey, I'm almost at a B. And then you'll get a B and say, hey, I'm almost at an A. So the system is designed to motivate you to keep going. The top two are how you get a plus or a minus after your letter grade. I'll talk about that when I actually have a class. It's a little more of a paradigm shift. The how real math work stars are often things that are very quick to do. Find an example of our math topics in the news. Do a problem on the board during class. One reason to use achievements is that these small things help connect math in the classroom to math out of the classroom. When you're being graded with points, it only makes sense to assign points to the things that really matter, because the purpose of that style of grading is to, as simply as possible, attach a letter grade to a student. On the other hand, with achievements, we have more time. It's a slower pace. We can have more things happen. It's important to recognize and celebrate math in real life. You probably, during the term, will find an example of math in the news. 
but by sharing it with the class, getting a star checked off, then we're making it so that all the math we do outside of the classroom isn't ignored. Too often in a math class, only the math topics being taught seem to count. And all of the other stuff that happens with math in real life is ignored. It is not recognized, it is not acknowledged, it is certainly not celebrated. So having all these stars, even for things that are small and you would do anyway, help show that we value that math happens in real life. We are not going to ostracize it and keep it out of the classroom. We're actually going to include it in the grading scheme and smile when things get checked off. So just because there's so many stars, don't think that this is a huge amount of work. It will feel like a normal amount of work. If you look me up and rate my professors, then people say the homework isn't worse than an average math class, and some even find it less. You will want to look this over. In your shoes as a student, I would probably print it out. In a normal term, when most students were in the lecture class, then I had pages of little sticky stars, and some people, besides having it tracked on this web page, liked the physical sensation of putting stars on their paper as they earned things. You're welcome to do that too. But there's a bunch to keep track of. We'll talk about them when we get together. Ask me questions if you're in a rush to understand things, but none of this will be uh, confusing when we get to it. We have lots of time together. By the way, the website overall has lots of pictures that if you click on them, something strange happens. So play around with that too. Most students find achievement-based grading a little unusual. It's not what they've been doing in the past. But almost everyone likes it much more than points-based grading at the end of the term. It feels more real. It feels more like you as a person are being recognized. And it feels more like the balance of what people actually care about is what the grading cares about. Thank you.